why the hell would you ever get married in Thailand? You can just live with the chick. Then if it doesn't work out, you throw them out and you're done with it, right? Eh, not so fast. What's up guys, it's Greeny. And uh, last week I put out a video about uh, my divorce, some things that I didn't know going into the divorce. Check that one out, I did that like last week. I alluded to the fact that I would make another video about living with somebody in Thailand, if there's any advantages to that or disadvantages. And we're gonna get into that in this video a little bit. I loved some of the responses I got from you guys on that last video. I got a bunch of comments I printed out. I just wanna go through some of them. I mean, I love the banter. That's what I like about making these videos is just some of the banter that it creates in the comments, you know, people commenting this and that. And some of the comments I look at, I'm like, fuck, are you really thinking that through? I mean, you know, Maybe I don't think things through. I don't know. I'm no expert on anything. And one of the comments will illustrate that for you guys. But let me go through a few of these comments before I kind of get into the meat and potatoes of this video. Because some of them I just want to address, you know, some great comments. I just printed out a couple that kind of relate specifically to this video or the last one a little bit. First comment, my philosophy, don't buy anything you're not willing to walk away from on a short notice at a total loss, condo, car, bike, and most of all, companionship. Now that makes sense, you know, I've said in the past, you know, if you come out here and you wanna buy a property, if you lose your ass on it, you gotta be able to suck that up. If you have a girlfriend or it costs you money, you buy a car, if anything happens and you're in not your native country, you gotta be able to walk away from it. So if you're just scraping by on nickels and dimes, you wouldn't wanna put all those into your nest egg here. Definitely not. Okay, another comment. Thanks, Greeny. Go Lions. They lost. By the way, I'd like to hear your thoughts on potential perils of living together in Thailand. That's what we're going to get into. Yes, make a video about the Thai prenuptial and how it was pre how I presented it to Fi Fi. We'll get into that someday. Another comment. Even a lot of Thais don't register their marriage with the I'm poor. They just have a sham village wedding for show. Much cheaper in the long run. Is it? Is it really? Is that guaranteed? I'm gonna talk about that. This comment from Asen. How can we get screwed? If breakup happens after cohabitation, no marriage and promise of marriage, please tell. Mm -hmm. Samosa, is there any provision of alimony spousal support in Thailand? Did you get caught on that hook? No, I didn't get caught because I had a prenuptial, but yes. Yes, you can get jabbed up for alimony. Greeny, can I ask you a genuine question? Why did you get married? I've been living in Thailand, well, Bangkok mainly, for a decade, and I've always gone by the motto that you don't need to take sand to the beach. I've seen countless people in their late 40s, 50s, and 60s that come over here, find a younger girl, decide to marry. I tell each of them it's not necessary. Every single one of them, and I mean every one, ended in divorce. It does happen a lot here, and you know, maybe, some people don't want sand between their toes. They get sick of sand and just want a stable, constant relationship and don't want to deal with the drama that comes with dating multiple different women, you know? And if you are committed to one person, eventually they're gonna want some sort of commitment. It can't just be, you know, you're just a grain of sand and I'm holding on to you for a while. That's probably not gonna work out too well for you. Another comment, don't get married. It's never a good idea to make a contract with the state involved, isn't it? You know, I heard that when I was a policeman and we started having cameras in the cars, like, is it a good idea to have everything documented? Well, that can save your ass sometimes too, you know? If you're an idiot and you do bad things, bad things can happen, you can get jammed up. If people make false claims and you have a uh, video, it can save your ass, just like when you're married and you have a marriage contract, which is a uh, prenuptial, that kind of spells it out. Then you go to the state, it's already registered at the on poor, so that does cut out some red tape, as I'll, as I'll get into more in this video when you hear some things that can happen when you're not married and you don't have any documentation or, or paperwork to um, divide up assets and whatnot. Another comment, I've been married to a Filipina for 22 years. If this doesn't work out, I'm flying solo. Getting married is stupid, especially in Thailand where your romantic options are basically unlimited. Well, they're not unlimited. Sure, they're unlimited in 
Pattaya, if you want to just spend money and it's a uh, financial transaction every time, you know, many, many things here are transactional. So, you know, if you're just a single guy wandering around in not dreamland of Pattaya or places like that, it's not like you could just have any girl you want. It's not, it's not like that. It's more like, well, some of you guys are going to argue because I know I got a lot of studs that watch the channel and they can have any girl here they want. But, you know... Once you get out of some of these touristy places where they're preying on foreigners or really are allured by the thought of being with a foreigner, it's not quite like that. Not every Thai girl is throwing themselves at a foreigner that you can have the pick of the litter. Another one, and this guy was being kind of a smart ass. Yeah, just give her a few months rent, give her a few thousand USD, give her X, Y, and Z. You give advice, you're greener than most. First, you don't marry them. That's the best advice. Then you give them jack shit. If they know they're getting jack shit, there's no incentive to get a divorce. And then get a few thousand dollars, which is a mega payday. Well, it um, might be a mega payday to them, but is a few thousand dollars a mega payout for me to lessen the headache of everything and just make things go smoother? You know, if you can't afford to be in a relationship, date, or get out of a relationship, don't do it. I agree. Don't do it. But, you know, whatever. My money, I'm not that worried about that, you know, a few thousand bucks here or there when you're with somebody a few years. At, at, that's, it'll cost you a lot more in the West. It does. All right, two more comments. Last one pretty much sums everything up when it comes to me. This one, why on earth would you ever choose to get married as a man? There are ways easier to get any type of companionship you might desire making marriage completely irrelevant and obsolete for a man going to Thailand today. Virtually every single relationship between a foreigner and a Thai woman is transactional. That's, that's somewhat true. And the sooner men realize this, the better. Instead of getting married, just get a girlfriend instead. Take care of her, treat her with respect, and if it doesn't work out, you can go your separate ways without getting the government involved. No wife, happy life. Okay, well... Is it guaranteed the government's not going to get involved? There is a thing called a court here, and there are lawsuits here that happen sometimes. So that's all the type of things I'm going to get into. The last comment, which is very short, takeaway. Everything this guy does in Thailand, do the opposite. I can't say I can argue with that guy. That is a very astute man right there. I cannot say I argue with him. Although, like, you know, I bought the condo. I think I'm going to do okay on it. I mean, the prices are still going up. They just got approval for this new mega mall that's getting built like walking distance from where I live and that's going to bring up the value so I'm still happy about the purchase here but you know if I talk about stocks or relationships this guy's probably right do the opposite so you guys can probably kind of guess where I'm going with things here let me just read you guys one more article I printed out then I'm going to get into my rant here or my opinion or some things I've learned here and actually what's funny is we're all guys except for the ladies that watch my channel who probably don't even comment about this or give a shit. Um, but I'm going to talk to you a little bit from a Thai lady perspective that is in this exact situation right now of being a girlfriend and a breakup. So I'm going to get into that in a second. So let me just read you a little bit of this article. It's from AAA Legal Services. They're here in Thailand, I guess. A-A-A-C-O-T-H.com. So I just want to give them their credit for this little article that they write because it's about the living with your Thai girlfriend, cohabitation in Thailand. I'm just going to skip ahead to the cohabitation advantages and disadvantages. So just going to read a little bit more, then I'm going to look at the camera and chit chat with y'all. Cohabitation advantages. Here in Thailand, there are certainly some advantages to merely cohabitating as opposed to registering a marriage with your partner. First, there's more freedom in cohabitation relationships. As a cohabitating partner, you are free to leave virtually whenever you want. There's no formal legal relationship to dissolve. Just pack your suitcases and leave. Second, as a party to a cohabitation relationship, you have the freedom to explore romantic relationships without causing legal headaches involved in committing adultery. And that's a major thing here. There's, there's, I'm going to get into that in a second. Third, you can create a cohabitation agreement with the same sex partner, if you're into same-sex partners. Finally, unless you specifically 
choose to, you do not become legally liable for your partner's debt simply by the virtue of living together. Cohabitation disadvantages. However, there are limitations to the freedom you enjoy as a party to cohabitation. Although there is no legally registered marriage, you may be subject to a lawsuit by your recent partner, now ex-partner, requesting either support or distribution from common assets, which whether or not your ex-partner can actually recover anything is a different story. In the meantime, you will have to hire a lawyer, file responsive pleadings, and perhaps go to court. All these activities can take time and money when you would rather be doing something else. If a cohabitating couple has lived together for a significant amount of time and there are titled assets at stake, house, condominiums, a lawsuit is more a question of when, not if. I'm going to keep it simple here because I'm stupid. So I'm not going to involve anything that has to do with childbearing here. So I'm not even getting into if you're cohabitating and you have a child in common. I don't even want to go down that road because the law here is quite different, quite different than in the West. But there was one more comment that somebody made, and I didn't print it out on my sheet, but I, I thought it was kind of funny. It said, why buy the cow if the milk is free? Has anybody been in a relationship where the milk is free? I mean, I've been in, I've been married in America, married in Thailand here, been in relationships in both places. And, you know, as a male, you usually spend money, especially if you are uh, the dominant breadwinner. You know, if you're dating somebody that doesn't have as much money, you're usually going to spend a lot of money. You know, my first marriage, my ex-wife, she made good money, as did I. I mean, not great money, but we both made about the same. I mean, she was a nurse and I was a policeman. We both made decent money. But I can tell you, being married to her, I sure spent a lot more money than I did during the years when I was single. Even though she was spending a lot of the money her, she made, I was spending a lot more money just because women love to spend money, <laughs> whether it's theirs, yours, or both years together. It just is a part of life. So in Thailand here, you decide, I'm not going down the road of marriage. I want to cohabitate. I have a girlfriend, and I'm going to have her move in. Well, depending on how long she lives with you, and say, you know, Maybe you give her a little allowance, 10000 20000 about a month for her spending. Maybe she has a job. Maybe she doesn't. Maybe you just want to spend all your waking time with her because you love the attention. And what the hell, when you're done with her, you can just move her out like that commenter said and be done with her. You don't think that they can come back after you and take you to court for, it wouldn't be called alimony, but support? They can. They can. I was talking to a... Thai woman, I think she's around my age probably, I think she's even a little older than me. And she had been cohabitating with a gentleman, a Farang, a foreigner here, for a long time. And he owns a condo, she'd been living in his condo for 16 years. Just wants to be done, he's not even in Thailand anymore, he wants to sell his condo, he needs the money. Well, that's she's been living there a long time and he's been taking care of her. And she's been dedicating her life to him, cooking, cleaning, taking care of him for the last 16, 20 years. I don't know how long the relationship's been, but it's at least 16 years. And if you think she's just going away like, get out of my place, bye-bye, I want to sell it, and it's that easy, it ain't that easy. Either they're going to sell the place and divide some of the assets, or he's going to have to make some payment, or something's going to happen, because yes, she does have recourse in court. You can't have a partner here and take care of them and be the breadwinner and expect them to just give you their time for nothing. And what's funny is, and I've had women, I'm gonna put my legs out a little bit. I don't, hopefully I don't look like a slob doing this. I just gotta get comfortable. And I've dated women where, you know, it's came down to the point that, you know, should we cohabitate? We've discussed it, um, I, you know, prior to Phi, and I mean, I've had, I've had situations like that occur, and, you know, I've had the woman tell me, like, you know, honestly, like, you know, I'm going to cook, I'm going to clean, I'm going to take care of everything, you know, and I'm not going to work, and, you know, you want me as your companion, but I want 20000 baht a month because I'm going to give you the best years of my life. I think at this time, how old was I? I was, um, this was before Phi, so I don't know. 50-something, 51, 52, 53, whatever. And I think the 
girl I was dating, she was in her mid-30s, but it's like, if I were to be with you and not work and dedicate my time to you, and then you stick around with me for 10, 15 years and take the best years of my life away, and then you just drop me like you can, I got no way to take care of myself. I got, I'm old, you know, no man's going to want me. And that's their attitude. That's what I've been told. I've been told that. And um, I've had other discussions with people, and I've talked to other female Thai people that I know, and that's the mindset here. That's just how it is. You know, you can say, ah, blah, 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 blah. Just tell them to get out. Go away. I'm not paying nothing. Now, if you're a little bit of a low life and, you know, you stay with somebody, say, you know, I'm talking multiple years and you just want to say you never bought anything and you're just renting and you don't own a car here and you don't own anything. Yeah, sure. You could disappear, go back to your home country. You can do whatever you want. Leave them, leave them be. You can do that. You know, will you feel good about yourself? Maybe you just won't even give a shit. Maybe you'll feel bad about it. Maybe you feel like, oh, it's right. You know, I'm breaking up. I'm going to give them a little bit of money. I'm going to set them up so they're not just out on the street having to take care of themselves and they can kind of restart their life. You know, many people do that too. But just keep in mind, there's no legal contract. People in Thailand, just like in America, can sue you for anything. You can be sued. They can take you to court. It's not called alimony. It's going to be called some sort of like non-spousal support and it happens it happens a friend of mine was dating a girl and she was with a man since she was 18 years old and I think they were together like 12 years and he bought a condo put it in her name you know he had a lot of money he had a business here but then he got caught cheating on her and she was done with it and oh my birds I love them hello guys isn't that a beautiful sound those chirping birds I love it and, uh, you know, he had to pay out. Who wants to go to court? Like, if you got the money, and you could just give a little bit of money if things don't work out, and save the aggravation and the heartache and the headache of dealing with that, why wouldn't you just do that? Like, are you you're stupid for doing that? Or if you just got the money and it doesn't matter, sometimes it's easier just to pay a problem to go away so there isn't a problem. Have you guys ever heard of the Bangkok haircut? Well, apparently... That's a haircut down here. Men have had their little schnozzles cut off here or sliced into. And let me tell you, there are a lot of Thai women you don't want to piss off here. Some women have short tempers. I've heard lots of stories and I've encountered, I've encountered some tempers at times. I, I, uh, I can push buttons at times. Believe it or not, I can be kind of a, an asshole and push some buttons and, and, and piss people off. And, uh, I've seen how tempers can flare like in a second, change from one mood to another. And, you know, some of these ladies here, along with the men, I mean, it's, you know, a lot of times in these, these tropical countries, people get hot fast. I don't know if it's because of the heat or, or what it is, but, you know, there are some Thai women, they can get mad. And, you know, if you can afford it and, and alleviate things without pissing people off. Things will, your life will be a lot smoother that way. All right, my camera's starting to overheat, so I'm gonna wrap things up. But a few other things I wanted to touch on, the adultery laws here. So that is a negative. If you're gonna be a dirty cheater, definitely don't get married, because A, your spouse could file charges against you, criminal or civil, if you were to be an adulterer, and even if you had a prenup or whatever the situation is, that, that, that would probably go very bad for you in a divorce type situation. So if you're even thinking you want to be playing the field, definitely, 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 you would not even consider marriage. Definitely that cohabitation thing would be the way to go. Another point is there's no common law marriage in Thailand. So technically, the living together thing, you can go your own separate ways and and you're not married or anything like that, but then, like I said, there's the legal system and they can go after you civilly and try to get assets from you. You know, did you make promises? Did you say things? Any little thing that you may have sent in a text message or written down, anything can be subject in court here. I mean, just like text messages, anything. If you made promises, even if maybe there was witnesses and you said, oh, I'm gonna take care of you, baby, this, that, you know. Things that you say can be held against you here, you know, so you got to be careful about that. And lastly, when it comes to marriage or living together and you buy things like property 
or house or different things and put it in their name, yeah, you're probably gonna be screwed because they're gonna say it was a gift, you bought it for them. In the marriage situation, well, that's the advantage of marriage, so I'll get into that later. But in the non-married situation, if you buy that stuff and put it in the other person's name, you're probably gonna be screwed unless there's some way you could show some fraud. There was one situation that I came uh, across when I was doing research on the subject. A guy was told by his girlfriend that he was not allowed to open a bank account here. And she opened a bank account, he put all of his money, however much it was, into her account. She dumped him and said, it's my money. He took her to court, sued, and he actually was able to get half the money back because that money was supposed to be allocated for their living expenses. So that's, you know, the two of them, he was able to recover half his money because she defrauded him. He could prove that she told him that it was illegal or foreigners could not open bank accounts here, which was an outright lie. So he did recover half his money, but only half his money. She got to keep half. And then who knows how much court costs here. There's two types of courts. I'll just get into that quick. I think I was told by my attorney, I'm not sure, but like a small claims court here where it's like 150,000 baht or like a different type of court where most cases are gonna be over 300,000 baht. I know that leaves a little bit in the middle, but if you want a good attorney, a lot of them aren't gonna to touch your case unless it's at least over 300,000 baht that you're arguing about. So just a bunch of food for thought. I'd love to see some more comments. I'll get some more ideas on videos from your guys' comments. I love the banter. I see people arguing about stuff and no, you can do this, you can't do that. So that's why I do this. I just love bullshitting around with you guys. Hey, what do you guys think? I just, um, just had these cushions made. It was about $100 US. And look at this. These things are so thick and heavy and comfortable. I had these thin ass cushions that came with this before and I never even wanted to sit outside. It sucked, but this thing is like so comfortable. Now, what do you guys think? Worth a hundred bucks? It's a nice material. They did a great job. It was an upholstery shop. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. We'll do some more bantering later. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much or rant too much or whatever. The next video will probably be about well, the next video, this type of video, uh, the advantages to marriage in Thailand. Uh, I'll get to that maybe next week. For now, signing off. Greeny out.